In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a double bubble and what it means to, to use a double bubble in NullSec for catching targets. So the reason for this tactic is because it allows us to basically bubble our target twice, once on the edge of the bubble and then once inside of a bubble. The reason this is important is because if the target is warp stabbed or can warp very quickly, oftentimes unless you're sensor boosted, you're not going to be able to get tackle in time or even if you do if they're warp stabbed they'll get away so it's a more it's a stronger way to tackle a target and guarantee that you're more likely to catch some of the smaller things like pods um, little frigates that might warp really quickly things like that and it's just a cool use of the in-game mechanics so first of all let's explain to you how to explain what the in-game mechanics are so let's figure out a shape for our gate. Let's make our gate a star. No, I think, what have we used in the past as a gate? I don't even recall, let's make it a triangle. All right, so let's say that that is the star gate, right there. So, ooh, this is gonna be tough. All right. Forgive the art mistakes. Learning as I go. Do the circle first, then the triangle. Can I move it? I can't move it. That's not cool. All right, so that's good enough. All right, and then let's, uh, let's get this. Then that's going to be way too big. But we can fix that. How about 18? All right, better. So, there we go. 500 kilometer circle right here from the gate. Now, the way that bubbles work is that for a mobile bubble, whether it be a small, a medium, a large, tech two large, whatever, for a bubble to work, it must be within 500 kilometers of a gate. So a 100K behind the gate bubble would be like that. And it would be pulling, let's say that your other gate, let's go ahead and do that. So your inbound gate is gonna be here. And this is your line of warp. Okay? So this one right here is say a 100K bubble, 100K drag bubble. And that means that anything coming from over here, I don't like that line, from over here in this direction will get pulled past the gate and into this bubble. Okay? So if we wanted to do a double bubble, we can exploit this 500K mechanic because say we did a bubble here that was 500 and 30 kilometers past the gate. That bubble would have no effect. It would have no impact on that gate and it would not work. No one would get pulled into it except for a very rare case where someone was maybe coming from back here or something, but this bubble would have no impact. But if we were to put a bubble right here just before the 500k line, or even more so, what, what you'll notice in the game, and I'm going to show you a video of this um, to, to uh, illustrate it better. You put the actual bubble, the actual the thing you see in space before it anchors, like right there on the very edge at 498 or 499, which sends your bubble a little bit bigger than the 500k range. Now what's going to happen is if anything comes, and let me just clear some of this out so we can see better. All right. All right, so if anything comes in here, it's going to get stopped right here on the edge of this bubble. Because what it cares about is not where the edge of the bubble is. What it cares about is where the actual emitter is, the mobile mobile small bubble or medium large whatever what really matters is where this thing is and because a mobile small bubble has a 5k radius so that is 
5k um, is it 5k diameter or radius? It's 5k radius, 10k diameter. Okay, so 5k is from the center to the outside. So what that means is that this can stick out past 500, but what you're still going to have is you're going to have people landing, and when they land, they're going to land here on the edge of the bubble where they can just turn around and warp away if you're not fast enough to catch them. So the way that you would catch them is, repair this right here, is you would put another bubble at about 503. That's usually what I aim for is about 503. If I do 498, there's a little bit of variability here that you have to work with and you have to maybe launch the bubble, bring it back in, launch it again, try to get it perfect because your bubble, when you launch for self, it puts it 1K away from your ship in any random direction. So you've kind of just got to do it over and over until it's the right direction to work. But since we know it's about 5K, if I put another bubble right on the edge of this first bubble at, say, 503, and best I could right there in a decloak spot so that it works as a decloak as well, then what I've just done is I've created a new bubble out here and I don't like that, so I'm going to do that again. That, nope, right about there. I've created a new bubble that's outside of the 500k range. So what this means is that this first bubble that's at 503 kilometers will have no impact on ships that are on this line of warp. However, this bubble here will. So the target will get pulled out right here on the edge of the bubble, you know, right where this other bubble is. And as a result, we'll be decloaked. I still recommend a few decloak cans. Um, you always test it. So once they're both up, you would go back here and you would do this warp yourself and you would test it and make sure that whatever spot you came out on, let's say you came out up here in this area up here, you would drop a can. But make sure there's a can on wherever the, the exit of warp is. There's some random variance in that as well. So try to cover that, but you already get one decloak with this. And what it means now is that anything that comes in here is not going to be able to turn around and just warp off. Because when they land, they're going to be well inside this bubble. Their shortest path out is probably going to be uh, maybe 3 to 5K up or down. But if they try to go backwards, they've got a long way to go here, probably more than 5K, 6, 7, 8K to go if they wanted to go that way. That's a terrible arrow, but... I think we can do it again. All right, so that way would be 5 to 6K. Same thing if they were to go that way. So either way they go, they're going to have to burn through, whether they burn back to the gate they came from, which is typically what they'll do, or towards the gate they want to get to. Either way, they're going to be stuck there for long enough for your ship to lock them pretty much no matter how terrible your lock range is, unless you're like in a Tech 1 hauler that takes 30 seconds to lock or something ridiculous. All right, I cut it abruptly there so I could pull this video up. And I wanted to show you this tactic in action. So what we have here is me, I'm in my wolf, and I'm in Y-MP. This is a entrance system to Providence. It's um, used to be one of the most popular entrance systems, but lately it hasn't been as populated or as fast, but it's still a good place to camp. Um, it's where uh, I learned this tactic from John Dres. I learned it from his video and then happened to run across him here and uh, talked to him about it and he clarified it for me and kind of explained the finer details. So basically I'm in warp right now from D6 to carry. So what's going to happen is I'm going to get caught and they've actually done a triple bubble but it's unnecessary. It's just a little bit overkill where you can do this if you want to. All right, let's mute the music. There we go. All right, so you can see I'm coming in, and actually I'm coming into D6, not carry. So I came from carry, and I'm going to D6. And if you can see what happened, I'm going to pull that back just a little bit. So I wish I was zoomed out right there, but I come in, and you can see where I get caught. I get caught right here on the edge of the first bubble, the bubble closest to the gate that I'm warping to, D6. And I'm within the second small bubble by probably 2K or so. Um, you can see a little bit better there. You can see where somebody else has died. There's a pod, or I mean, a, there's a corpse and a wreck. 
on the edge. I came out on this edge over here. Good thing when you're camping bubbles, you want to leave the wrecks and corpses out because they'll decloak. So it's just like an extra decloak every time you kill something. Then someone put this bubble here, which was a little bit excessive and not necessary, but you can do that. And now that's it's covered even more. So it's even more deadly for anybody who gets caught. It means that they're going to be stuck and going to have to burn out of that bubble, whether they're cloaked, uncloaked, you know, whatever the case is, it gives you more time. So that's a, a real infield example. Let's see if it shows anything else here that's worth looking at. Not really. But that kind of shows you the what happens in the double bubble. You end up on the edge of the one closest that's at 498 kilometers. Um, you're still inside the one that's at 503. And if you put another one, then, you know, like I said, it's excessive, but it, it does help.